Do you remember the first live music experience you ever had? I the do. Artist, um, the artist, where you were, uh, yeah. your age. Yeah, I was at uh, Tulsa City Limits. It was Steve Warner. <laughs> and I was probably, oh uh, gosh, about 18, 19 years. I think I was 19 years old. I was about to transfer to, uh, to UCLA. Wow. My first show. And a matter of fact, they did a, uh, I got honored at an event years ago in Dallas and they, they wanted to make it really personal. So they brought things back that were a part of my life back in the day. And, and, uh, Steve Warner actually was a surprise guest <laughs> that performed that night. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so were you just so like, like my first show was the Doobie brothers in Amarillo, Texas. Right. And I was <laughs> blown away, Troy, by live music, everything about it, the way it looked, sounded, everything about it. So were you hooked on live music from that point? Did uh, that take you to a different place in music appreciation after that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, what, yeah, there's no doubt that because I'd heard from a lot of people saying that what you hear on the radio isn't really what you hear when you go to a live music uh, event. And, and I found that to be true. And, and yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I uh, saw Hank Williams Jr. there when I was in Oklahoma as well. I was a big country music band, still am. Um, which obviously is why we're doing this now with the music festival. But uh, so I went to a number of concerts, uh, went to a few when I was in college at UCLA, didn't go to as many at Oklahoma. Like I said, I was leaving, but when I saw Steve Warner, but uh, when I was in Dallas, then, you know, I got to know the people uh, there at Billy Bob's. And so I would go whenever I saw an act that was coming that I wanted to go see, I'd go and, and uh, go backstage and meet them and, you know, made a lot of great friends friendships uh along the way so yeah those were good years i don't get to as many music concerts as what i'd like to now but uh yeah it was a big part of my earlier days saw the eagles here last week unbelievable awesome uh, yeah but now with regard to planning a festival of your own and obviously you've got a team right this, have you been blown away by how many little, how many million little bitty things there are that go into an event like this? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I, I, I will say that, like you just said, Bill, I, I've got a great team, Tony Faye Productions. They've done a lot of big events. And so I, I wouldn't even have attempted this if, if they had, if Tony and his team hadn't have said that they would do it. Um, that was the first call that I made. But uh, yeah, so I, I've, I've really been looking at it more from 10,000 feet. They, they've been doing most of the legwork. Um, I've gotten involved with it, with the artists and the things that, that I need to make decisions on. But they're the ones who have been doing the day-to-day -day and really all the small detail. It's been a lot because we've rallied an entire community. That was important. <clears throat> it was important to me. It was important to, to Tony that we bring the entire community and let them feel like they are, they're a part of this. So it's not just Troy Aikman who's putting on this music festival. It's really the, the town of Henrietta. And I think that, uh, along with a lot of other things, the economic impact that will happen, but that's been the reason why this has been a real shot in the arm for this community. Can you ever see the Troy Aikman festival, or the, I'm sorry, the, the highway to Henrietta festival being taken to a bigger venue, to Norman or to the University of Tulsa Stadium or, and keep the brand, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and have it benefit Henrietta, but maybe take it to a, a bigger locale. I wouldn't rule anything out, Bill, but uh, I, I think what's what makes this festival unique is the fact that it is in my hometown. That was really important to me because that's how it kind of started was I had been doing a, a class reunion for the previous two years at my restaurant in Arlington, Texas. And I just felt like, wow, I'm putting on this, this reunion, this class reunion, and we're three and a, three hours away from, you know, where, where we went to high school. So uh, it started with me wanting to do something back in, in Henrietta, and then it evolved into this, you know, really much bigger thing than I had originally planned. But uh, uh, I, I, I wouldn't anticipate that. Did you, that, that show at Tulsa City Limits, did you attend with a teammate? Or do you I remember? attended with my high school girlfriend who, uh, uh -huh. yeah, I dated, we dated for five years at, in, in high school and, and uh, through Oklahoma. It was the so transfer you, of, to UCLA that broke us up. So Wow. Wow. That was eventful, wasn't it? That was, it was eventful. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Yeah, she's doing great, though.
uh, if you and I were to take a three hour drive in your truck and you just hit shuffle on your music, who, what artists would I most commonly hear? Ah, that's a good question. I, uh, you definitely hear a lot of, of Kenny Chesney. You hear a lot of Pat Green. Um, shoot, I like them. You know, I got them all. Uh, I, I just, Eric Church is, uh, is one of my favorites right now. Blake Shelton, of course. Uh, I've, I've, a lot of old country too. I mean, I keep up with the current stuff, but uh, I, I still kind of dive back into the '90s music as well, and the 2000s, and some of the earlier stuff. But Toby, you can also he, hear some Springsteen and Mellencamp. So right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, um, all right, I've got to ask one football question because 30 years ago today, you didn't know it yet, but you were you were fixing to quarterback one of the top five teams in the history of the NFL, the '92 Cowboys. And and the best cowboy team of all time. So if I'd asked you thirty years ago, Troy, do you feel like you're on the brink of that kind of a season, or did that one kind of sneak up on you a little bit? You, you knew you were good. You knew you were really young, but you knew you had a great old line and Emmett and and all of that. So, uh, but but did you have any inkling what you were about to to come up on that season? No. No, I thought we were pretty good, but I don't think anyone anticipated. We didn't even realize, Bill, after that season, how good we were. I think it was, I think it was probably in '93, the year later that we that we really started to figure out. Man, we were pretty pretty good, pretty talented because we started losing players, and then those backups would come in, and then they would be Pro Bowl players. And then looking back, we said, "Wow, we were we were young, but we were really deep and talented." Uh, real testament to Jimmy Johnson and what he did putting that team together.